we arrived in Baghdad, at first we met mostly adults. These were people who had lived through Saddam Hussein, then the last 15 years of war, and then ISIS. You could feel their fatigue. There are few job opportunities, and no one was optimistic for the future of their country. But then, when we walked into the school classrooms, it was like the sun emerging from behind clouds. Shia, Sunni and Christian children laughing, learning and playing together. They were so hopeful and curious, always ready to smile. They are the future of Iraq. Full of joy and enthusiasm, these children don't carry the heavy burden of history that their parents do, who have lived through so much war, pain and loss. It was a gift of the spirit in this place to see these children so easily and optimistically learning together without any regard to background, ethnic, religious or political. They're too busy being children, learning, growing and loving together. St. George's School of the Redeemer, under the visionary leadership of our dear friend Father Faiz and his assistant Sinan, is a model for this country. The children, with loving guidance of their parents and teachers, are committed to peace in a secure and prosperous Iraq. They will lead the way to a better future. It's a bit of a cliche, but when we visit other countries and we actually meet with the people, we discover that their concerns are our concerns. They have exactly the same concerns as we do. They want a safe place for their children to grow up. They want their children to grow up with values. They want their children to have a potential future in which they have jobs, in which they can have children and grandchildren. And that's the wish of all the Iraqis we've met since we've got here. They want their country fixed. They want to have a normal life the, the life that they in some ways remember from 15 years ago. It was tough and it has been tough, but now they want to rebuild their country and go back to being able to live what we would consider normal lives. You know, it's happened twice now that I was in a worship service here at St. George's and as the prayers or the singing were going on here, I could hear the minaret, the call to prayer outside of the church. Um, the, the Muslims being called to prayer. And rather than it being a distraction or something like that, um, it, there's something extraordinarily poetic and beautiful about it in that, that this is a faith community inside of a culture. And, you know, my biggest wish in being here and seeing our friends who I really have come to love and I've come to love this country is that they, as we all need to learn how to live together in peace, and in love. Uh, that's the purpose of all that we do here. And I hope that uh, as the future unfolds for Iraq, we can all be part of writing a new story for this wonderful country. On the Nineveh Plains in Northern Iraq is the city of Karakosh also known as Bakhdida. Before 2014 and the destruction brought about by ISIS, it was the largest Christian town in Iraq. Karakosh was an agricultural center supplying chicken, beef, and sheep products to the whole country. With up to 100 poultry farms, it was even known as Chicken City. Today, there are only a few working farms, but many of the farmers are still here and need our help. This is Bassam. At one time, Bassam had 100,000 chickens in this immense coop on his farm that now lies in ruins. Recently, he bought a number of chicks to try to rebuild his business, but without funds to buy antibiotics, only this small number survived to maturity. However, he has the space, equipment, and desire to try again, if he can only secure sufficient funding. Just down the road is Jakob. As you can see, he has been able to purchase and is properly raising 2,000 healthy chicks. There are up to 100 farmers just like Yassam and Jakob in the Karakosh region. All they lack are the resources to begin farm operations again 
to restore what ISIS has taken away. We can make a difference here and now with your help. For more information on helping to start a chicken farm or support other efforts to assist Iraqis Christians in rebuilding their lives today, please go to our website or call this number. While in Karkosh, Swick was invited to attend a veterinarian's day with about 50 farmers. Be the star of the show. These men represented families who operated generations of successful chicken farms prior to the attack of ISIS in 2014. They are skilled, experienced, and eager to work. They and their families are ready and able to rebuild their farms and businesses. They will be successful only if they can receive sufficient funds to do so. But they are understandably frustrated. These individuals represent only a fraction of the total number of farmers in a region that was once called Chicken City. They were part of a community that was one of the primary sources of chicken products to the whole of Iraq. Beyond Karakash, many of these families have relatives who remain in refugee camps in Jordan and elsewhere. The painful reality is that many of their friends and relatives are reluctant to return to Iraq until there are jobs and livelihoods and homes for them to return to. SWIC and its partners in Iraq are committed to helping these brave and resilient farmers. We are helping them to reclaim their land, rebuild their farms, and re-establish their families on their ancient homesteads. Today you can help create chicken farms, commerce, and hope. Please visit our website, standwithiraqichristians.org. صباح الخير اخ شامل صباح النور عيني باعتبارك احد العوائل المسيحيه اللي رجعت الى قرقوش بعد تحريرها من تنظيم الدوله الاسلاميه داعش الارهابي وساكن في حي سومر اللي بهاي المدرسه القريبه اللي تم حفر بير بيها واللي جهز المي للمدرسه وللبيوت اللي حول المنطقه حفر حفر حفره منظمه عندنا بئر للماء هذا البئر احنا طبعا بحاجه اليه لشحة الماء في المنطقة في الأشهر السابقة فإحنا نشكر المنظمة على هذا البير اللي حفروه عندنا في هذا الحي ويكون له فائدة لأهالي المنطقة والحي 
باختصار اخ شامل شلون تشعر بانه منظمه ستاند ويذ ايراكي كريستيان طبعا نشكر المنظمه الشكر الجزيل اللي ساهمت بهذه المساهمه الطيبه الانسانيه طبعا اهميه البير هي اهميه كبرى لانه من الماء تصنع الحياه ف طبعا راح تكون قيمة هذا البير هي كبيرة خاصة في أيام اللي يصير هناك جفاف عندنا وشحة في المياه راح أهالي المنطقة يستفادون وكذلك هذه المدرسة اللي ينشئ هذا البير بالمقربة منها راح تكون هي روح الحياة في هاي المدرسة والمنطقة طلاب المدرسة هم بحاجة إلى ماء لأنه النظافة هي العنصر الأول والأساس في العملية التربوية اليوم إذا تقدر إذا تريد تخلق جيل لابد أن تبدي من النظافة والأخلاق وبعدين التعليم اللي هو أيضا رئيسي في العملية لذلك يسموها التربية والتعليم نعم هي التربية والتعليم آه كلمة أخيرة للمنظمة آه المنظمة ستاند ويذ إيراكي كريستيان قدمها إلها أخ شامل طبعا إحنا نشكر المنظمة اللي ساهمت بهاي المساهمة الإنسانية طبعا قامت بحفر عدة آبار في هاي المنطقة هي دلالة على أنه هي تشعر بالمواطن تشعر بالإنسان هذا واجبها الإنسان تقوم به على أكمل وجه حتى تدعم الحياة اليوم أنت تريد تنشأ حياة لابد من أن توفر العناصر إن شاء الله المنظمة هي قائمة بواجبها على أكمل وجه وأشكركم تشعر بأن شكرا لك اخ شامل على هذا التوضيح البسيط والرائع اللي انت تفضلت فيه اشكركم يا اهلا وسهلا شكرا جزيلا